We have made it to Spain. And it's raining. It's pouring. <laughs> right. The rain in Spain is mainly on the plane. But this isn't the plane. This is somewhere pretty spectacular. We can't wait to show you. If you've been following our adventures, you might be expecting to see us in Portugal right now. After beetling our way across France with a chicken. No chickens allowed. Thanks for coming. If you didn't watch that episode, it's definitely worth a look. We arrived on time into Portugal, only to find that we were a week early. So this week, we head to northern Spain and indulge in some of the off the beaten track destinations that we newbies love to explore. These magical locations made all the more splendid by the weather. Stick around to the end to find out if Portugal is ready for us to return. We're the newbies, a family of travellers with big dreams. I'm Tara, this is John, and this year we were joined by our little boy Crusoe. 2020 sent the world for a loop, and it sent us on a journey. Not wanting to waste a single minute or second of it, we embraced van life and travelled to over 20 countries in Europe in our self-converted camper van. With the arrival of Crusoe into the world, our priorities remain the same. To make every moment matter, to take this little family around the world, and to teach our children about huge horizons. A life full of opportunity and adventure around every corner. We've made it 200 meters so far this morning. <laughs> it's taken us a while to get going, but we're going! Yes, Chris. Oh, baby. Oh, little man. Someone's ready for a sleep. Yeah, we are off to Spain. Spain again. Again, yeah. We've been in Amarante for the past week or so, waiting to sign some documents on a particularly exciting piece of land that we're looking at here. Yeah, we have got a mega project brewing in Portugal and we're very excited mm. but our meetings have all been delayed and so we are going to go make the most of our time. Quite right so we can't give any updates on what we're doing in Portugal this week but we can say we are off to a mountain right now that has been basically dug to nothing by the Romans a long time ago. So cool it looks amazing. Off we go! Off we go! On with the show! On with the show! Let's see whether we can get more than 200 meters now. <laughs> We haven't got the very best weather, but that is what we've come to see. Las Mentulas. Las Mentulas. It is a particularly interesting mountain. Hopefully, we'll get some clear skies to have a look at him. One of my favourite things about travelling with Crusoe is his little face when we arrive somewhere new. And he peeps out of his car seat, desperately trying to look out the window, almost knowing that we must be somewhere new and wanting to see where we are. Anyway, we have arrived at Las Melunas. The weather is not been kind to us. What do you reckon, my love? We need to find somewhere else to park. We do. Should we have some lunch first? Let's have some lunch first and then head off. Mmm, yum, yum. Mm. Screw that, that's a giant broccoli. Mm. That is an outrageous size broccoli. You can't eat that. Oh, mm. Ah. <laughs> well, 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 we can have a look at that. We're ready. Sunshine reggae. Yeah, it is. Sort of. We're going for a walk over in that direction. Crusoe's getting very excited. And you're not going to believe a single word of what we say next about how this mountain was formed. <laughs> I know, but it's totally true. And it's awesomely epic. It's very cool. And you won't believe us because usually your facts are rubbish. <laughs> That's true. It's but impressive. this time, it's completely true. There's a sign. Is there any English? Oh yes, there is. So, the Lavalinas Trail is a beautiful route through the interior of the Medulas, Roman gold mine. Las Medulas, we're in the village, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the Senda de Las Valinas, is the route that takes you through the mines themselves. So okay. I think that's the one that we should do, isn't it? Which way do we go? Follow me, my darling, I know the way. Do you have concerns, Crusoe? Nice. Oh, Sandra de las Valinas. That's the badge there, let's go. How many? Two kilometers. Easy peasy, let's do it. I don't, I don't really trust your direction. Track record's not great. So anyway, should we tell you about this place? Yeah, do, do okay, tell us. So, this place is recommended to us by a very, very kind 
follower of ours, whose name is... Uberacht. Uberacht. We're not saying that right, but you know who you are. Thanks so very much for sharing those PDFs with us. Um, back to Tara. Okay, so back to this place. This used to be a hill, just a normal hill. The Romans came here and mined for gold. One of the biggest and most important gold mines in the, Euro in the Roman Empire. And they mined it to the point where the mountains have eroded to look like they do today. Which is so cool, man, because basically the Romans dug an entire mountain away. Super cool. And, and think about that. Like, they didn't have any diggers. Did it all by hand. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it's it? Remarkable. The open cast mine, or Ruina Montium, which means wrecking of mountains, was the most spectacular exploitation technique used by the Romans at Las Medulas, and is pretty remarkable when you consider we're talking about 2,000 years ago before the advent of diggers and heavy machinery. Using a network of galleries and pits which they progressively filled with water, they saturated the lower parts of the network until they collapsed to expose the gold-rich layers deeper in the mountainside. The results are truly extraordinary. Extraordinary. They've basically removed a mountain. Incredible. Whilst wandering through the canyons is spectacular, the mountain's features are best viewed from above. And so we set off on a steep hike through chestnut forests in the pouring rain to a viewpoint several hundred meters above us. Look at that tree. That is amazing. I think that that's nearly as old as my dad. <laughs> Surely not. <laughs> I mean, they must be hundreds of years old, if not older. They are remarkable. You know what that reminds me of? You remember the scene in Flash Gordon when they've got that tree trunk and everybody's got to stick their hand in the, in the tree trunk. I haven't watched Flash Gordon. And if they get, if they get stung, they die. It's a dare or a bet. That's that tree. He's moved Crusoe because he needs some sleep. <laughs> but he's way too busy looking at everything. Come on, little man. Sleep time. Crusoe has finally gone to sleep. He has. Just as it started to rain. <laughs> he's got his hood up. He's got his hood up. He's all right. Actually, a really great day to be walking through a canyon like this. I can imagine when the sun's shining, it can get super hot down here. Yeah, we are enjoying a bit of cool, actually. It's been really, really hot and humid down in Portugal. Around, baby, so yeah. this is a nice bit of respite, isn't it? It is. And there's something really nice about walking in the rain when it's warm enough to do so. Yeah, that's true. It's quite liberating. It is. Climbing to a viewpoint. I don't think we're going to see much of you on account of the weather. And Crusoe's well heavy, man. Quite steep. Hey, they are. Look at all that lichen down the side of them. Isn't it beautiful? It's lovely. Oh man's weird, doesn't I it? Mean, speak of clean air. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> clean air. It's like in Finland, you know? Yeah. Only without the reindeers eating it all. Well, it's a pretty spectacular view, even though it's pouring with rain. You can't see very much, but I imagine on a clear day, it must be truly jaw-dropping. Isn't that remarkable? So, worth coming up here, even in the rain, because as you're walking through the mountains, you don't really get a sense of it. You've got to see it from that viewpoint. It is unbelievably beautiful. It's a, it's a really steep climb, but very, very worth it. Yeah. Um, and it, even if it takes a couple of sit downs on the way up, do yeah, come up do. because that view is spectacular. It really is incredible. Let's get this baby back down. He is starting to shiver. I was just having a mum moment and worrying about Crusoe, who you can see clearly is absolutely fine. 
<laughs> thinking your poor little chap, he's probably cold. Then I remembered at eight weeks old, you was on the Isle of Lewis, running around in a hailstorm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on some Neolithic stones. Yeah, exactly. He must be thinking, these raindrops are comparatively about six degrees warmer and falling quite softly on my face rather than flying at me. And icy. Like bullets. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Überacht Dam um, or Dame, for that recommendation. It was absolutely fantastic hike. I really, really enjoyed it, even though we did get a little bit wet. Soaked, but it was beautiful. Really, really cool, as John said. So we're back in the van and we're headed to a riverside spot where we're going to park up for the night. We hope. Anyway, we'll have a look. Um, if the if the ground is a little bit soggy there, perhaps we don't go on. It's all right, doesn't it? Yeah. Not bad at all. Lovely. We're going to call it a day. Yeah. Make some soup. Yeah. Get warm and dry. Get warm and dry. Look at this place, man. Right. For supper, we are going to have some tomato soup. That kind of weather. I do wish we had some nice fresh bread though. Yeah, me too. In amongst all the adventuring, the thing we love and enjoy most is being able to come back to the van at the end of the day and spend time together as a family. It's starting to feel like home now. After a month of living in the van full time, the space feels familiar and we've got to know Safari and how we fit into it with Crusoe. Meals around the table together are becoming a family tradition that we know will stay with us no matter where we go. But we love that they're starting now, in this van, on this journey. So that's the end of another wonderful day on the road. We found a great park up spot here um, next to the river and we'll be spending the evening peacefully, probably. <laughs> hopefully. Crusoe, that's all dependent on you. Not sure what we're going to do tomorrow. What we'll probably do is have another look at Ubracht's PDF and see what other tips and advice they've got for us um, in this region of, of Portugal and Spain. Yeah. Dad. Morning, Crusoe. Why is it still so dark? I don't know, it's seven o'clock in the morning, man. The day's half over. We still don't know what we're going to do today. I think we go see those mills. I think we have a cup of coffee first. Okey-dokey. Are you making? I'm making. Crusoe, what are you going to do? Ah, uh, you are sight for some ride. That was probably one of my favourite park ups ever. If we didn't have a thousand and one things we wanted to see, I think we'd stay another night. We're off. We are going to drive about three hours today, which I know seems a bit bonkers and we should really slow things down, but it's actually really handy for Crusoe to sleep on the road. So we are making our way towards a series of 60. 60, yeah, 60 mills that um, basically are running down the side of a mountain. The rain continued to fall and this made our drive all the more interesting with moody clouds hanging low across beautiful tree-covered mountains. A stark contrast from the east of Spain we'd driven through just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Well, that's good timing. The little dude's just woken up. And we are about... 15 minutes from the mills. Yeah, so looking forward to getting there and getting out and going for a walk. Let's see. What's that? Somebody's house. No, there it is. Your destination is on the left. She's lying, it's on the right. I'd say right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go right. I think we're going walking up there. Lovely. Okay. How exciting. We're getting wet again, aren't we? We're getting wet again. Today we're going to be a little bit more organised, I think, and get out our rain jackets. Why? At least for Crusoe. Okay, Crusoe, do you want a rain jacket? And let's get you a little bit more prepared than we were yesterday, shall we? Okay. <laughs> yeah. We're English, Crusoe. It's fine. We're used to the rain. It's turning into rather a damp weekend, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Right, what's the deal? 
The deal is that we've got a circular route going on. Sure. About four kilometers. Really? And um, we go up and then back down again. Nice. Hmm. Uh, okay. Which way? This way. Okie dokie. The Muinos de Folon Edu Picon are a series of 57 old stone mills that date back to the 17th century, with the oldest mill dated at 1702. They're grouped into two sets. The Folon area is home to 36 of the mills using the Folon River, and the remaining 21 are those of the Picon. They cascade their way down the hillside, guided by the little canal stream that tumbles gently through them built of stone and marked by their stonemasons with a series of inscriptions, names, initials and crosses intended to protect this beautiful place. They were restored in the 90s and have since been declared a site of cultural interest in Spain. This is honestly one of the most enchanting places I've been to, even with the weather. It's just beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. These little mills are so sweet and this tiny little stream that's kind of running and, and that's all they've captured as John says, I don't know, it's just, and the, the vegetation is just so pretty, there's these beautiful purple flowers everywhere and soft heather. ferns and heather, it's, just, oh, it's lovely isn't it, I feel like I'm in some kind of fairy tale hillside. You know what's amazing, you've got 67 mills running off a piece of water that big. That's it, isn't it? You know, so small and humble. Where's the, where's the torrent? Yeah. Coming out of the sky. Well, where's that? That's where it is. Because <laughs> you know, in Spain, the rain falls <laughs> only on the plain. I think it was mainly on the plain. Was it mainly on the plain? Yeah. Can we put that into a percentage? <laughs> Can we put that into a percentage number? What percentage of rain? <laughs> falls only on the plain in Spain? None. Because if it's like 99%, I think we're pretty much done by half past four. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, look at it. What I love about this pathway that we're walking on right now is that it hasn't been laid down for tourists. It's quite clearly and very obviously an ancient roadway that was used with the mills. So the most likely cause for that over there, we think, we remember from Pompeii, will have been a horse and cart. And these will have been the cartwheel tracks that will have cut their way through or been cut for cartwheel tracks. That's so cool, isn't mm, it? So that it comes easily down there. Wow. And if you think about the route, it needed to come over some rocks, almost certainly been carved out, especially for a, a horse and cart. being out in weather like this feels a little bit crazy because it is wet <laughs> and there's no one else here so we are the only people who thought yeah all right it's raining we'll go and have a look anyway it's a really English. good lesson yeah we're English yeah, that's what life's like but it's a really good lesson I think in remembering that every minute and second is precious even the rainy ones and take it from me there is something truly therapeutic and magical about standing in nature when it's raining and listening to the water softly dripping off the leaves. Yeah, 
does something to your soul. I recommend going out, standing in the rain somewhere quiet the next time you can. It's good for you. And then I think it's time we go to investigate whether or not I've packed the hot chocolate. <laughs> That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Right, is everybody dry? Everybody's dry. Everybody's dry, all drying. Oh, wait. <laughs> Who is the biggest legend in this van? <laughs> <laughs> well, Crusoe might challenge you on that one, but... Okay. I'd give it to Crusoe. But... Hot chocolate, anybody? Hot chocolate it is, that sounds like a great idea. So you'll note I'm making the hot chocolate rather than John. Last time we had hot chocolate was in Scotland and John didn't stir at first. <laughs> That's true. Otto very sweetly pointed out and gave John instructions. I still don't trust him though, so it's my fault. Anyway, your hot chocolate's really love. I'll just put it over here, shall I? Thanks very much, Helen. Whoops. Busy day today, but I... I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I think Crusoe did too. There was something just really magical about wandering around those mills in the rain. We have cozied up in the van, finished the hot chocolate, and are about to have a little bit to eat before we call it a day. Tomorrow, I think we're going to drive just a little bit further north in Spain to Bayonne. I think it's called Bayona. Castles, ruins, coastal roads, sunshine. Hopefully, sunshine. Hopefully, sunshine. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. It looks like we might be leaving the only sunny space in all of northern Spain. Yeah. I hope not. I hope not too. I've got wet jeans on from yesterday. I we want to dry out. We are so damp and soggy this morning. Have a look at the back of the van. Even the stuff that didn't get wet is damp. Anyway, the sun is shining this morning. Otherworldly up here, isn't it? Horses, Poor horses. horses. They must be wild horses. They look know. quite scraggly. They, they look. Uh, they look healthier than the ones in Namibia. You know, on the Namib desert. What a beautiful road we've 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 managed to find for first thing in the morning. It is so absolutely stunning. We're heading up to where are we heading? Bayonia. Bayonia. But instead of going up the coastal road, we've taken a road that is literally running parallel, but about five or six kilometers inland. We can see the sea over in that direction, but we're going over some, some quite, um, quite pleasant mountains. Pleasant, that sounds a bit shit, but we're going over some really beautiful mountains through some forests. Um, I think we've got to the very, very top right now. Oh. Look, wow, look at that. Oh my goodness! Look at that view. Oh my goodness. Check that out. Wow, what a what an absolute privilege to have driven that this morning. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And the solar panels are pretty happy too. So why have the newbies come all the way up to Bionia? Well, apart from anything else, it's been a really lovely drive up here and I can't wait to do the drive back down the coast road as well. But more importantly and quite excitingly, there's a castle here and a port. The port is what we've come to see. The reason for that is on March the 1st, 1493, the Pinta, one of the ships from Columbus's voyage to the New World, returned to Europe and arrived in this port here, making this town, Bionia, the first port to receive news 
that there was actually something on the other side of the ocean, America. I mean, imagine sailing across that ocean from a new world and you've got land hoy, you've got land in sight and you're in the Pinta and you're like, okay, you're far out, but you can see the land. You're probably a day away from that actually mooring up or, or dropping anchor. The excitement on board that vessel must have been epic. Yeah. And I imagine quite a lot of relief. Yeah. Yeah, you Probably know. Probably riddled with scurvy, knackered, sunburned, <laughs> exhausted, and just like, we did it. We did it, I can't man. wait to sit for it and tell everybody, and eat an orange. And eat an orange, <laughs> yeah. There is nothing we love more than an epic adventure story and surely those of the early maritime explorers are some of the greatest travels of discovery ever taken in the history of our world. Our time in Bayonia ended with a wander through the old town streets and a spot of tapas before we made our way back in the direction of Portugal, hopefully this time to sign some papers and be on our way east towards France and from there, who knows? Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. We would love to have you along for the journey.